cool. Start on this side. Sound Yeah. <coughs> I'm talking to you. Hello, hello, hello. Check, One, check. Three. Good evening and welcome to the second of Cocoa Municipality's virtual IDP meetings for the first session in 2021. And I'd like to welcome everybody from the Humanstorp community. It's your IDP meeting tonight. This is covering the wards of 4 and 5, wards 15 and parts of ward 12 as well as ward 6 in Kwananzamu. So we'd like to welcome all the community that have joined us tonight for this meeting. I'm Councillor Brenton Williams, and I'm standing in for Speaker Hutton Borman, who's unfortunately got another meeting tonight. I'd like to welcome our Mayor, the Honourable Horatio Hendricks, who is sitting next to me, and he'll be speaking to the community shortly. I'd also like to welcome all the officials that are here tonight. Municipal Manager, welcome to you, as well as the councillors that are here and everybody that is online. That is a new experience for us to do IDP meetings virtually and last night was a great success and we're looking forward to a constructive meeting tonight as well. We welcome people to, that are watching on YouTube to comment and add your comments to the comment section on YouTube and we will do our utmost to answer all the questions tonight. You're also welcome to submit your queries and comments on the IDP and the draft budget via email. That email address will be made available to everybody during the course of the presentation tonight. So if you don't feel comfortable putting a question to us tonight via the comment section, you are more than welcome to email us and then we will make sure that your comments and queries are noted and included in the documentation of the RDP. And, then, and we'll also forward any budget questions to our Budget and Treasury Division as well. So on that note, um, welcome again to everybody, and I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Colleen Dreyer, who is our RDP manager, and she's going to explain the process and the procedures of this meeting and why we're having it. Over to you, Colleen. Uh, thank you, Councillor. The IDP is a government-initiated process that municipalities follow in preparation of their five-year strategic plans for developments. It is an instrument that provides guidance on the budgeting and decision-making processes of municipalities. It can also be seen as an umbrella plan for a specific municipality and the areas falling within the municipal boundaries. It co coordinates the decision-making and budgeting of the municipality in the improvement of the quality of life for the community of a particular ward. An efficient IDP makes provision for social and economic development for an entire area within the municipality. The IDP as such provides for the overall framework for land use management, infrastructure development, and the protection of the environment. Um, uh, yes, Councillor um, Brenton, we also have to take into consideration the legislative framework that's guiding this process of the IDP and we're taking parts out of legislation such as Section 34 of the Local Government Municipal Systems Act, 32 of 2000, that prescribes annual review and amendment of integrated development plan, is that the municipal council must review its integrated development plan 
annually in accordance with an assessment of its performance measurements in terms of Section 41. And to this extent that changing in uh, circumstances so demand and may amend its integrated development plan in accordance with a prescribed process. Now within this framework, there's also a part of the uh, Municipal Finance Management Act. In that legal framework, the contents, the processes, and procedures relating to the IDP origina originates from uh, Chapter 5 of the Municipal Systems Act, Act 32 of 2000, read with sections 21, 1A and B, 22A, 1 and 2, and 173D of the Municipal Finance Management Act. Act 56 of 2003, as well as Section 173D of the MFMA that stipulates that any proposed amendments to the IDP following the annual review of the IDP in terms of Section 34 of the Systems Act, that it must be tabled by the Mayor together with the budget. Uh, thank you. Colin. Uh, Good evening to all residents of Humansdorp. As always, it remains an absolute privilege to present the Integrated Development Plan and account on the implementation of key priorities to our communities and stakeholders. As already indicated, this is the first time that in Koha's history that we present the IDP virtually, although this form of community engagement presents inherently its own challenges we must overcome these barriers that COVID-19 created for us. Uh, but not accounting to our people through whatever obstacles we may face is never an option. Our process will be to present the IDP and draft budget for 2020-2021 virtually over four major areas in Koha that includes Jeffreys Bay, Yuma's Dorp, the Camptus Valley and the Greater St. Francis Bay. During these area consultation meetings, we will cover collectively each ward in that respective areas. Since taking over Koha in August 2016, we, faced, we were faced with many challenges. A poorly governed municipality, wildfires, and the start of a very prolonged drought, which is some of these issues. Over the years, we have succeeded in turning the fortunes of a municipality that was on the brink of collapse uh, into a place of hope, a place where the pursuit of happiness and prosperity is real for everyone. This was done through grit and determination, by building trust and partnerships, and placing value on the social contract that we formed with our people, as well as placing people at the center of everything we do. Despite the devastation brought by COVID-19, ravaging lives and economies uh, across our region, we have succeeded in keeping uh, humans to serviced while caring for the communities, one of the most important aspects that we as a council do. Some of the major projects completed over the past four years include the drilling of six balls in Humansdorp. Viable balls will also be connected to water supply. Furthermore, the Cresontain Wastewater Treatment Works was opened in November 2019, while work at the Kwanazama Wastewater Treatment Works commenced at the end of March this year. Four container ablution facilities were delivered to the residents of Makalas and chemical toilets were also installed at Donkaruk. The resealing and upgrade of roads uh, which provide access to livelihoods and support economic development are also a top and ongoing priority. Roads that were resealed include Met Melville, uh, Lawrence Stradom, Duplessis Street and Jacob Street, uh, Felix Street, Narina and Human, Human Street, as well as the access road to Marker Lass were also tarred. The number of sub-economic houses and sites electrified in Humansdorp over the past four years stands at 797. This includes the electrification of houses in Kreisontein, as well as the emergency houses in Marker Lass in December of last year. Close to 900 title deeds were handed out to residents from uh, the youth camp, or youth camp as we know it, John Marcus and Old Arcadia. The Kreisontein 391 project was furthermore completed in December of 2019. Human Stop received a further economic boost by the launch of a mo mobile biochar plant earlier this year, as well as the opening of a KFC and Puko. Not stopping there, 
We launched a waste management and recycling program in February of 2021 in a bid to help um, keep human store clean. This, in, this initiative is strengthened by the rollout of recycling and wheel events. The recycling project also opens the opportunity for SMMEs to get involved and to generate a household income. To ensure residents' safety, an integrated intelligence operations center was established in Humansdorp earlier this year. A direct spin-off of the increase in crime is uh, specifically gang-related crime in the area. A special word of thanks to Woodlands who have committed to keep our roads uh, that lead into Humansdorp from the end to clean since October 2018. We have also recently launched a, pro a project in partnership with a co-op to build and maintain a safe walkway from Kwanam Zamu to Nikomalan High School to keep learners safe. While there are still many mountains to climb and a virus that we, we need to combat together, we are on track and determined to deliver a system of good governance through service excellence. All the while keeping Koha safe, growing and smart for all residents keeping our environment clean and green for generations to come, and caring for our people uh, from cradle to grave, from birth certificate to death certificate. The support from our business sector, community-based groups, and individuals has also been nothing short of amazing, and we are confident that with you by our side, no obstacles will ever be too big for us to overcome and build a strong united Koha. As we enter into the final year of our five-year strategic plan known as the IDP, we need to close the circle uh, over the next few months as we go to elections. We never promised to be better. We offered uh, to serve you better by striving for good governance through service excellence. This remains our single most commitment to you. I will now hand over to the Finance Department who will present the annual draft budget for 2020-2021. Thank you. Sorry, it's first IDP. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I gotta get that one right. So I'm going to into some of the key priorities that was drafted into our IDP. Um, first, I will do Ward Four. Um, just get to the right slide. Okay, the first priority was street names in Yerkam, Sivendlan, Markelas, and Donkaruk. This is a funded project and it's still ongoing. I think what delayed the project was the fact that we didn't yet have a policy in place. That policy has now been adopted by council, as well as the establishment of a committee that will accept all applications through the ward committee and the ward council uh, for the naming of streets. So this is a funded uh, project and it's now fully ongoing. There was a request for a lower bridge upgrade in Fortain Street at the PPK Church in Kreisfontein. Currently, this is a very expensive project and it's not funded yet, but we will try to ad address this in 22-23. The upgrading of roads for the entire ward. This is a funded project. As you've heard in my foreword, there's uh, already a few roads that we upgraded, J Jacob Street, um, uh, Boise Street leads into Ward 5 uh, and currently the, the upgrading of um, gravel roads. We've already appointed a, a service provider to complete the designs and this is a funded project so it's also an ongoing project. Uh, the fourth priority was for IMAS lights um, in Van Lingen Park, not officially named yet, Donkerhoek and Mooietzig. Uh, this is also a funded project. Moetzig uh, is part of a tender and other, prior, other areas will also be prioritized. I believe we already purchased two uh, high mass lights and there's three high mass lights and this still needs to be installed. Uh, I think all of them are going up in Ward 4. Okay. The bush clearing around Kreisontein uh, Primary School, John Marcus in Donkerhoek. Uh, this is a funded project. It's currently in progress. We've got around about <clears throat> probably 15 to 20 SMMEs that's currently appointed. Some of them already started work. Uh, and this project is envisioned to be completed by June 2021. But I'm happy to report that the guys are on the ground 
and um, they've already started with the bush clearing. Skip bins for donker ook mooi het sig en van Lingenpark. This is a funded project and the skip bins will be provided. Uh, cameras in John Marcus donker ook en mooi het sig. This is part of our public safety um, plan. It is a funded project and it is a priority for this current year. Currently we've established, like I've reported earlier, uh, an operations center in Humansdorp. This operations center still needs to be um, fitted with the proper infrastructure, uh, the cameras and, and the monitors um, and all the IT that goes with that. Uh, so this is a funded project and we are rolling out all the plans we made during the Public Safety Summit in September of 2020. The notice board for illegal dumping, this is an ongoing issue. Uh, I think I said it earlier, I'm not sure, but we've identified about 30 um, illegal dumping sites that we will replace with Gardens of Hope. These will be community gardens that we roll out throughout Koga municipality to replace illegal dumping. Uh, currently, I know through Councillor Timothy Yankees in Ward 4 and 5 and 15, we've been putting up some of these boards uh, and there's still a few more to go. Notice, uh, notice board for the wood office. I cannot believe this is actually a priority. Um, but yes, this is still ongoing. I must just get clarity on what kind of notice board that is um, for Ward 4. Uh, as far as I know, Ward 4 has already been upgraded. Uh, tiling has been done, windows, uh, the whole kitchen has been refurbished as well as the boardroom. I just need to check on whether the notice board has already gone up. Uh, communal taps for Moor Etzig. When Moor Etzig was established, there was a few uh, communal taps installed. Uh, I don't think this is an ongoing project. When Moor Etzig starts to get extended with an additional 200 houses, we will also uh, install some more communal taps. But currently there is communal taps, so I consider this one to have been done. Ward 5, um, the paving of sidewalks, currently sidewalks is unfunded, we need a bu budget allocation and the reason for this is because of the expenditure on the resealing of roads as well as the filling of potholes. I think Brenton over the last year, uh, during this financial year, we already spent 30 million rand on the resealing of roads, so we got to prioritize the paving and sidewalks uh, and probably some of the stormwater, uh, this will need to get funded. It's currently not funded. Security cameras in hotspots, uh, as I reported earlier, it's part of our public safety plan and, and, and infrastructure rollout. And this is currently a project that's ongoing. Uh, I, I'm thinking, I think we're starting this in Ward 4 and then we'll be moving towards Ward 5. Ward 4 is currently in this financial year. Hopefully, Ward 5 will then be uh, in the next financial year as well. No, it is in the current financial year. Bush clearing, I already reported that the guys are on site and are, uh, we've got 15 to 20 SMMEs currently clearing. I think within Ward 5, Ward 4, and Ward 15. Okay, I think my clicker needs batteries. Uh, the installation of speed dumps. Um, this is a funded project. We have installed speed dumps in Human Street, Felix Street, in Markelas, in Rina Street. In uh, the last financial year, uh, we've got to prioritize some of them in this financial year, but I would encourage the Ward Council of Ward 5 to uh, use your Ward Development Fund to partly uh, fund some of these speed dumps. Um, the installation of LED street lights. This is a funded project. We've already installed about a thousand street uh, LED street street lights that we replaced, uh, as well as spotlights. In the budget adjustment, we we allocated some more money, so we'll be purchasing another thousand uh, additional LED lights that's going to be rolled out. Um, currently, we also have a 
seven day tender that's ready to purchase that that led lights the tarring and paving of street and illegal dumping notice board same as ward five uh, priority roads are in design phase ward six the one of the priorities for ward six was the high employment rate and the provision of learnerships through students and, and for students and graduates. Um, this is part of the institutional transformation. The project is currently unfunded. Uh, we have uh, forwarded an application to CETA for approval, and we're still waiting for that approval. But with respect to unemployment, I think the establishment of the biomass plant in Humansdorp is going to make a significant difference in terms of employment. Uh, through the creation of SMMEs. There's also a number of infrastructure projects that's coming to uh, Koha where uh, I think the, the issue of unemployment will be, um, well, not fully addressed, but we'll, we'll, we'll put a dent in our unemployment rate uh, with all these infrastructure projects that's coming to Koha. Street lights, um, this is funded. Uh, and it will be currently prioritized in this financial year before the end of June. Uh, these will also then, of course, include some LED lights, poor resealing of the internal roads and potholes. Uh, media, this is a medium to long term program, as was indicated before by our, our finance portfolio chair, that this will always remain an ongoing project. We've inherited about a 500 million rand backlog. Uh, from the previous government in Koha, and we've taken this one very seriously. We've allocated roughly about 25 million per annum towards this. Uh, this is not sustainable, but we'll try to sustain it for as long as possible. Uh, so yes, uh, we'll be getting to all of the roads in Koha. Regular sewage spillings in uh, residential areas. Uh, currently, uh, to change the, the system is unfunded. Uh, I think possibly what will help is once we've upgraded the Quantum Zamo wastewater treatment works, um, but we'll try to prioritize this in 2022-23. Let me not say too much on that. Uh, in terms of what six illegal electric electrical connections in Joe Slovo informal settlement. This is a funded project and it will be prioritized in this current financial year before um, June 30. The upgrading of the community hall in Vergenoeg, <clears throat> this one is unfunded. We'll have to handle this one in terms of IGR or maybe go to the wind farms and see if that project can be funded, but this is not our mandate. Uh, but that does not mean that we'll not keep on fighting. I think that uh, community hall is completely dilapidated and has to be uh, demolished and has to be built up from the ground up and we'll, we won't need less than 10 million rand to, to do a new um, multi-purpose center there. The rollout of CCD, CCTV cameras, uh, it's currently unfunded for this ward, uh, but it will be prioritized during this financial year. That, that sounds completely wrong. That's got to be 2022-23. Uh, establishment of housing committees. Uh, according to my knowledge, all housing committees have already been established. Um, it's not prioritized for this year. I think through our human settlements uh, manager, he went all around Koga municipality to establish these housing committees, uh, and that has already been done. The beautification of the entrance to Quantum Zamo. Currently, this is unfunded. Uh, hopefully, we can prioritize this in 22-23. Then, Ward 12, I think this is the final ward. Uh, and we're speaking specifically uh, of the lower Quantum Zamo, sorry, lower golf course. There was a request for IMAS lights. The service provider has already been appointed, and the project is in progress. Standalone taps, uh, I think the reference here is possibly to community taps. Uh, this is still ongoing. 
I think the community, especially of lower golf course, needs to also understand that the more community taps we install, the lower the pressure will be. The only thing that will resolve that pressure, uh, low pressure, is if we also install some, some pumps or some pump stations. Uh, so this is going to cost us. Um, hopefully we can prioritize that in the new financial year. The upgrade of the lower golf course entrance, uh, this is currently unfunded and we will investigate what uh, we can do here in 2022-23. Sorry, 21-22. The eradication of the bucket system, this has always been a priority for us. Uh, we purchased over 20 containerized abl ablution facilities, but it's not just putting up the ablution facilities. You've got to get the reticulation, the pipe works, um, uh, it's got to be near a current system, and if that is not the case, then basically the project gets delayed because it needs some new funding. So in order for us to roll out these uh, containerized ablution facilities to help eradicate the bucket system, we're going to need a little bit more funding, um, but this is still the highest priority on our IDP, our institutional IDP, um, but we honestly, we need more money. The fire prevention and bush clearing in Paradise Beach, St. Francis, and Cape St. Francis. Um, this is ongoing with the fire risk committee established. I think we've already made some, some huge progress uh, through the funding from the one million rand received from, what's the company's name? Sunlam, Santam. Uh, so uh, with the bush clearing, through uh, community service, we're also appointing uh, some people in in um, in St. Francis, uh, the communities of Paradise and Ashton Bay. Uh, we're struggling there with people phoning the provincial department directly because they don't want the bushes cleared because they believe it's environmentally sensitive, and that's the holdup in the project in Paradise and and Ashton Bay. I would propose that the community get together and establish whether they want the bush clearing or not. Uh, upgrading of roads and stormwater in um, Ward 12, this, this project is also funded and the project is currently in design phase. The construction of the spit and the rock revetment in St. Francis, uh, this is a funded project. Um, I think we've already spent as a municipality close to 10 million rand on this project. It is in progress. 50 me 15 meters is left before completion. Uh, we need just a little bit more funding to com fully complete this project. The installation of a waterborne system uh, for St. Francis. This is in a pre-planning uh, phase. This is going to uh, need some money, but currently it is a funded project. The maintenance of the bridge uh, and fire breaks. Maintenance of bridge and fire breaks. This is ongoing. Um, the construction of houses in lower golf course. Uh, the project is currently unfunded. The project is blocked due to the lack of bulk infra infrastructure. Hopefully, with the upgrading of the Konozamo wastewater treatment works over the next two to three years, we can unblock the housing. Um, uh, RDP housing project. The tarring of the Gama Road and Cape St. Francis Road, um, this project is not funded. I don't know why it's written that it's funded, because the, the Gama is a, is a provincial road and it was not resealed. Cape St. Francis was resealed, so just a correction on on what is uh, written there. The installation of a high mast light in lower golf course, this is currently unfunded, but it will be addressed in the 2022-23 uh, financial year. The installation of fire hydrants at the Bry areas in Paradise Beach and St. Francis Bay is currently unfunded, but we will try to prioritize this within our budget in the next financial year. Then the last ward is Ward 15. Uh, part of the key priorities that was identified by the community 
uh, was the upgrade of the internal sewer system from town to upper golf course. Uh, currently, this project is unfunded, but it will be prioritized in the next financial year. The provision of internal reticulated water system, sewer system in Graslaagte and Moeras. Currently, it is unfunded, but it will be prioritized. I think a lot of these big infrastructure project is going to depend on the fact whether we are successful in our bid to uh, get foreign direct investment uh, for some of these really big uh, uh, infrastructure projects. So once we unlock that funding, these projects will be prioritized within that, within that project uh, funding. The construction of a multipurpose center at the country club, uh, this is currently unfunded. Uh, it's not a mandate of local government, and we'll address this through uh, the IGR. I think currently what is happening at the country club is the upgrading of the play park, uh, which is a, a ground-funded project. Currently, the, uh, the contractor is uh, in the process of being appointed. I think the CLO is also in the process of getting appointed. But the actual um, community center, as you know, it was burned down. Uh, I think the, the insurance claim is also not yet processed for, for that uh, damage. And we will we'll have to look externally um, through our provincial departments to fund this project. The installation of a high mast light in Acadia and is funded and the service provider has been appointed to do the, the design. Again, the erad eradication of the bucket system in the upper golf course, uh, this will also be prioritized um, in the next financial year. The rollout of CCTV cameras, again, it's in our current priority, uh, inclusive of Ward 4, 5, and 15 um, for the rollout of infrastructure, uh, safety and security infrastructure. Okay, same as last night, I'm not going to go into the war development fund. This should be discussed with you through your ward councillor uh, in community meetings and, and the ward committee to report back to you in terms of progress on the war development fund. Uh, I think at this point in time, I'm done. We're going to go over now to the report and the draft uh, budget for 2021-22. Uh, this will be done by Shane to my right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to uh, present to you the budget for 2021-2022. Um, as anticipated when doing um, any budget, actually, um, we anticipate budget challenges um, pertaining to maintaining an acceptable employee-related cost ratio, increased costs associated with bulk electricity purchase as a result of uh, the increase of well, the increase of costs uh, imposed by ESCOM onto us, uh, the allocation of the required budget provision for the rehabilitation and maintenance of infrastructure, maintaining electricity and water loss at, at an acceptable level, um, as well as maintaining levels of revenue collection rates at the targeted levels and maintaining an acceptable cost, co cost coverage ratio. Um, and we're moving on to the principles. Uh, we have to ensure <laughs> we have to ensure certain principles are adhered to. Um, we have to ensure that we prioritize the, and the priorities and targets set out actually in the IDP needs to be embedded within our budget as the IDP feeds the budget. Um, the level of property rates and tariff increases to take into account the, uh, the needs to address the maintenance of infrastructural backlogs. Um, as well as the level of property rates and tariff increases to ensure the delivery of municipal services on a financially sustainable basis. Also, we need to ensure that the need to enhance the municipality's revenue base. Also, it's to be noted that no loan funding is available to support capital uh, budget um, in the view of financial affordability consideration. Um, moving on to financial performance, um, I'm merely going to highlight the uh, ones that stand out. Ultimately, property rates, we will be, from the previous, from the current year, we'll be increasing it at 5.25, coming from 207,801 million rand to 218 million rand. 
um, service charges. We have electricity uh, from 291 million rand to 334 million rand. That's a 14% increase. Um, water revenue, we'll be increasing it at 7% uh, from 83 million to 89,581 million rand. Uh, sanitation, uh, an increase, a proposed increase of 6.5% from 55 million to 58 million rand. Then we have refuse uh, at uh, increasing it at 4.7% from 53 million to 55 million rand for the proposed 2021-22 budget. Um, just to also highlight that other revenue, we have a decrease of other revenue from uh, 20 million rand to 10 million rand. Um, that basically the bigger portions that make up our 965 million rand total budget for the budget for 2021-2022. Um, okay, just a graphical representation of revenue by source. Um, property rates at 22%, electricity revenue at 34%, we have uh, water revenue making up 9%, sanitation making up 6%, and refuse making up 5.7%. Um, yeah, moving on to expenditure, uh, we have a total expenditure budget of one trillion rand, one billion rand, um, one billion rand, an increase of 3.52% from the current year. Um, making up that amount, we have employee related cost at 378 million rand, um, increasing that by 8.59% from the current year. We have uh, finance charges. Oh, okay, we have finance charges, a decrease in finance charges of 48%. Uh, this is a result of the loan, our long standing loan coming to its end. Um, and then, just to highlight as well, uh, other expenditure, just an increase, a decrease actually of 9% from um, uh, 111 million to 100 million. Okay, it's graphical representation of expenditure. Employee related cost making up 35%, depreciation and non cash item making up 8.5%. Uh, we have our bulk electricity at 26%, uh, and then just noticeable your other expenditure at 9.34%. Okay, our tariffs. We have a proposed tariff for property rates at 5.25% for the 2021 year. Water, 7.1%, sanitation at 6.5%, refuse at 6.5%, electricity at 14.59%, and uh, no change in, in environmental management fee, and ooh, cash flow statement. Uh, we have a cash flow statement at the beginning of the year. Um, budgeted year for 2021, 2022, we have 90 million rand. Uh, receipts at 951, payments at 996 million rand, um, ultimately a net decrease in cash at 44 million rand, um, and cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period at 45 million rand. Uh, Cashback reserve, um, just to highlight that uh, we, throughout um, our proposal, we have a Surplus, sorry, a surplus of 13 million rand um, compared to a surplus of 18 million rand for the current year. Cost coverage being 0 0.6 compared to the current year at 1.3. Okay, moving on to capital expenditure. Uh, we have, just to highlight uh, the Corporate Services Directorate um, capital expenditure uh, proposed capital expenditure at 1.9 million rand. Executive and Council making up 2 million, 2.7 million rand, and finance totaling 2.4 million rand for the 2021 year. Capital expenditure for infrastructure and engineering. Um, I'm merely going to highlight the the greater uh, making up the greater amounts. Um, we have Safri substation being electricity project at 1 million rand, upgrading of sports facilities, which is a MIG project at 4 million rand, 
upgrading sanitation, um, sanitation system of Old Hanky, another MEG project at 9.2 million rand, fencing of wastewater treatment plant, an internal project at 1.5 million rand, also another electri electrical department, um, a, cap a capital project of Ocean View electrification, an INE project at 6.7 million rand. Also, uh, there's then a proposed upgrading of gravel roads, gravel roads in Human's Dorp, a MIG, a MIG project at 14 million rand, um, and make all of this making up a total of 45 million capital projects for infrastructure and engineering. For planning and development, in total, the proposed budget for 2021 year uh, at 1.1 million rand. All right, Community Services Directorate um, uh, proposed draft annual budget for 2021 capital projects. They have uh, fencing of sports and recreational facilities sitting at 1.5 million rand, um, machinery and equipment at 2.26 million rand, as well as district funded, um, funded project for vehicles at 1.6 million rand. Um, ultimately giving us a total of 7.49 million rand for um, community services directorate projects. All in all, uh, the total of 61 million rand for all capital projects. Just a, a brief breakdown for transfers or basically capital projects um, as from grant funded, grant funding, um, totaling 35 million rand and internally funded um, projects at 25 million rand. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. OK, uh, thank you, Shane. Thank, for, thank you for the presentation of the budget. We're going to open up for comments and inputs from uh, all our viewers. I think uh, Councillor Brenton Williams is going to handle that questions. Uh, we're possibly not going to get to all of the questions, but he will explain that. Brenton. Thank you very much, Mayor. And thank you to Mr. Berger and yourself for taking us through those presentations. We're going to ask our Infrastructure and Engineering uh, Director, Mr. Oerstazen, to respond to the um, query on the Johnson Ridge sewerage system. Um, so we'll get all the technical details on that one. We've noted the comments on the gravel roads in Ward 5 that uh, we will certainly not forget them. And they are also part of our um, budget for the, over the next three years that we have for um, gravel road upgrades and there will be a number of roads in Newmansdorp as well as in other towns in Coca that are going to be upgraded. Um, the trimming of the edges of, of the gravel roads in Ward 15, that one is definitely taken note of Mrs. Van Fieren and that is also part of our project in keeping Coca clean and serviced and we are already busy with trimming of roads in a number of different areas of Coca and we certainly won't forget about Ward 15 in that process. Um, I'm going to head over to Mr. Oerstazen to handle the Johnson Ridge query and then we'll get on to the other questions that are coming through. Thank you, Mr. Oerstazen. Good evening uh, to the people of Humansdorp and Koga. The installation of a waterborne or reticulation requires pre-planning, which means we need to appoint a professional service provider to survey and design uh, the, the proposed network and then prepare tender documentation to appoint uh, the contractor. Uh, hence, the project is currently unfunded and we require a capital budget uh, for the outer years for that. So we will pro prioritize that. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Oerstazen. I trust that one um, covers the query from I think that was from Mr. Angela. Um, Mr. Angela, you are more than welcome to email us if you need more um, information on that project. We'd welcome that. And um, the uh, information is on the screen at the moment. Uh, the email address is idp at coca.gov.za. Um, the next question we've got is the um, eradication of the bucket system in Polar Park and um, other areas in that, um, I think it's lower golf, golf course, Guananzamu area. Uh, Mr. Oerstazen, while you're there, could you comment on, on that, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Like the mayor alluded, we first need to require the upgrade of the Guananzamu treatment works to create capacity. 
and then from there we can inter in install internal sewer reticulation. We are currently busy, started with the, with the process of upgrading Konezamu, but we require funding to extend that project and for the installation of internal services. That's also at the moment unfunded. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Westhuizen. I've got a couple of queries for Director Mabusela coming up. And um, Director Mabusela, if you could um, join us in the front here. The questions that we are, are getting are regarding the housing project for Ward 6. What is the progress on that? As well as the um, purchase of the farm for extension in Kwanenzamu. Director, if you could answer that. And while the director is moving forward, Mrs. Van Fieren, we take note of your uh, request for the installation of stormwater drains in Hobson Street to assist with the overflow from Malchas and Geswin Street. Mr. Oersthuizen, if we could take note of that to include on our, our planning for going forward. Uh, director Mabusela, over to you. Um, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, in, uh, with regards to the housing project in Kwanom Zamo, um, which has always been a blocked project due to bulk infrastructure, um, I think the positive uh, breakthrough that we have there is that we now have the project funded for the upgrading of the water waste treatment works, which is the enabler for us to be able to have bulk infrastructure enough to carry the capacity of the housing project there. So we should be um, looking in the next financial year coming, um, the completion of that project so that we can forge ahead with the project that has been blocked. And in terms of the housing, um, um, the land that we have recently bought in the farm for extension of, um, again, um, human settlements, we have purchased that land parcel um, and it was a trench payment over two financial years, which the last financial year is the one that has now just ended. We are in the process of the planning planning phases um, for that one to get the planning in place and the sort of land surveying uh, processes that need to happen there. So we are in the planning phases for actually um, getting the, um, the land parcel ready for um, human settlements project. I hope that covers the two Questions sufficiently? Chair. Thank you very much, Director Mabusela. Um, we appreciate your comments on that. And again, with the, um, we do invite our viewers to email in if your queries, or if you've still got follow ups to your queries. The email address is idp at coca.gov.za. Uh, Mrs. Queensy has got another um, comment more of the low water pressure in parts of Ward 5. Director Oosthuizen, if we could just take note of that as well. And um, Mrs. Queensy, thanks very much for informing us on that one. And um, at this point, those are the only comments and queries that we've got. There are a couple of comments on the, uh, the state of the roads in Newmansdorp and um, We've got people thanking us for the work that has been done on the roads and the improvement that they have already seen. And at this point in time, we don't have any more queries from the community. So I'd like to thank everybody that has joined us. And um, again, if there are any queries, we have got that uh, email address available. We urge the community to take note of that and to utilize that email address so that we can have a budget, that, I mean, a budget and an IDP that is meeting the needs of the people of, of Cocoa Municipality. So on that note, Mayor, I'd like to thank you and everybody that's part of our team here tonight for bringing this virtual IDP to the community. And we're looking forward to the next meeting tomorrow night. And then I think we've got one more after that as part of our virtual IDP meetings for 2021. And on that note, I wish everybody a good evening. Thank you.